Hi everyone. I finally finished my new project and thank you. Now I have a little more than 200 subscribers. So I told myself that means 200 people look forward to my video. So I must try my hardest to find something interesting that you may enjoy watching. And here is what I made. Yes, it's real braided wood. It's called Hida Chidori Goshi and is a type of kumiko. I hope you find it worth spending the next 5 to 10 minutes with me. First off, I needed to make wood strips, but this must be so accurate. So I made some jigs and bought a couple of saws. This is the saw guide I made. There are magnets and plexi to support a saw blade straight, and it has an adjustable guide. And these are the saws I bought. This one is for both rip cuts and cross cuts and does an extremely good job for cross cuts. But it's only okay for rip cuts so I also bought this rip cut blade which was amazing too. After cutting each strip, I planed the edge of the leftover piece with a shooting board that I also made for this project. It's prep work for cutting another strip from this board. Just to show off, the stop block is replaceable so I can change it when it's worn out. Then I planed all strips with another jig. This jig allows me to correct wood thickness and it's height adjustable. It is very important to have the uniform thickness for this project. See, it works great. I was just too happy with the result and I even had a feeling as if I finished my project already. And yes, I cut the strips in the lengths I needed and planed them. The materials to make these jigs cost me about $50 and they are made by hand tools other than a drill. So if you are a beginner like me, you should make one too. It's a good woodworking practice. Anyways, now it's ready for Chidori Goshi. Okay, I guess this part is where you want to see how I made it. In this video, I will focus on how I fabricated the pieces and what I pay attention to. So, if you want to know the mechanics of the braided trick, I made another video for this. Like you see, I taped the pieces and really carefully marked the lines. It has to be so accurate. Then I used the flash trim saw to cut out the pieces but yeah, the saw blade is too soft. So I put a nice expensive attachment on it. At least this made me feel like those woodworking YouTubers surrounded by expensive machines. Since this flash trim saw doesn't have a set on the blade, the cuff is relatively thin but it cuts too well to adjust the depth of the cut. So I used my favorite hobby saw for cutting the last 1 16th of the inch. By the way, I still feel awkward that I run a woodcraft channel on YouTube but it's all because of your kind comments and I really appreciate it. Oh well. Just so you know, even if you discourage me by comments now, it's too late. I won't switch this channel to a cooking channel. Anyways, my favorite chisel time. But again, the cutout height has to be so accurate or I can't braid it so I use the plywood for a height reference and clean the cutout parts with a knife. Here are the pieces. Most of them are cut out to third of the wood piece and a little bit wider than the actual strip size so it can slide easily. But once that has only one third cut out, it's very snug. Here is the quick view of the trick. After you assemble the two third cut out frame pieces, you can slide the top and bottom pieces to make the gap wider for the middle locking piece. And then put one third cut out piece to lock. It's cool, right? So, let's see if I can assemble them. Okay, now the frame pieces are done, so I need to put the locking pieces.
I didn't put them all the way in but stopped before the locking part to glue and then locked them. You know, I can't believe a popsicle stick craft led me to this wood miracle. Anyways, let me show the fabrication of the laptop stand. It's actually simple and was easy. Maybe because I'm using an expensive fest tool? Seriously, the last bench project was fun but really hell for me. But at least it was a great practice for fabricating tenons and mortises. The only thing I felt was, though I have no complaints about the cheapest chisel set from the Home Depot and tiny Arwin ones, I need more variety sizes of the chisels that will make things easier, so maybe that's my next thing to buy. Well, as my practice, like you see, I tried kind of angled joints, and it was okay. I don't know, unlike the last bench project that I failed a lot, this one goes too good. Now, sanding the fist after chamfering all the pieces. But yeah, this was where I found my mistake. Before assembling the kumiko, I should've chamfered the kumiko strips a little bit. Then I put the stop block, assembled everything, and put my favorite Howard oil. Okay, let's see the final product again. The Kumiko doesn't have a noticeable gap, and I'm so happy with it. I don't know what to say, but this is great to me. Honestly, I feel it's waste of material if I use it, so I already gifted it. I made the lowest possible stop blocks for its look, and tested with 4 of 13 to 14 inches laptops. It holds the laptop okay, and I can use it with no problem. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I would be happy if you liked the video, and happier if you subscribe to this channel. If you have any suggestion to my video, it's also welcome. See you!